Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala. In this module, we shall be discussing about sampling of water and wastewater. You know, monitoring is an important component of any waste water or water conservation and management plan. And in monitoring, sampling itself is very, very important because if things goes wrong at the sampling time, that time all the data generated will be faulted. So, it is very, very important to have proper care and to follow the precautions while having the sampling of water and waste water. So, the learning objectives of this module are that what is sampling, what is the purpose of sampling. We will be discussing general considerations while sampling. We will also discuss sampling frequency required. Then we will discuss sampling devices. Finally, we will discuss that how to do the sampling from different water or wastewater sources. The suitability of water for particular use depends on its quality. The management of water is also linked to its quality. The water standards are also based on the water quality. Hence, water quality monitoring is one of the first steps in the rational development and management of water resources. The monitoring comprises all activities to obtain information about the water system. The first and most important step of any monitoring activities is sample collection that is sampling. So, what is sampling? The objective of sampling is the collection of representative portion of material from any environmental matrix that may be water, air, sediment or biota small enough in volume to be conveniently transported and handled in the laboratory for the purpose of analysis. The results of any chemical or biological analysis depend on the samples offered to the analytical laboratory. So, the samples are handled and if necessary treated in such a way that no significant changes in composition occur that may interfere with proper analysis. So, various control procedures set for the sampling should be followed. What is the purpose of sampling? There are four major purposes of water sampling. These purposes include planning, sampling for research, sampling for process control and sampling for regulations. Let me discuss these one by one. The first one is planning. The planning purpose of sampling include establishment of baseline water quality conditions or to generate baseline water quality data to determine the effects of particular project. Determination of assimilative capacities of streams and waste load allocation and to project future water characteristics, etcetera. Sampling for the purpose of research. Some specific research objectives of sampling include determination of treatment efficiency of treatment system, determination of effect of change in process control variables on effluent characteristics and to ascertain health effects of drinking water effluent etcetera. Third purpose is process control. Process control objective of sampling include improvement of quality of uh, effluents and determination of interfering substances etcetera. Sampling for the purpose of regulation. Regulatory goals of sampling are verification, compliance and enforcement. For example, Sampling is conducted to examine compliance with water quality standards. Whenever we go for 
sampling, the general considerations that should be kept in mind while sampling are given here in this slide and these considerations are sampling location, sampling devices, cleaning procedures, sampling types, sampling frequency and parameters, sample labeling, sample preservation and sample transport to the laboratory. Let me discuss these considerations one by one. The first one is sampling location. Water quality varies from place to place in most of the water systems. Therefore, locations appropriate to the needed information for a particular purpose must be selected. While sampling, convenience, accessibility and practicability are important aspects, but below given are some of the important considerations and these considerations are homogeneity of the water or waste water and non homogeneity of the water or waste water. While selecting the sampling location, we should not be biased. When you are doing the sampling of a river, suppose at one particular point, one effluent is adding and if you take sample from that particular point, certainly the pollution load will be higher at that particular location and that type of sampling is called as biased sampling. Second one is sample types. Samples can be collected differently according to the need. The samples can be collected by three different ways. These may be grab or catch samples. These also known as spot samples or snap samples. Second are composite samples and third are integrated samples. What are grab, sport and catch samples? When one sample is taken at a time at a given location, it is called as spot sample. It shows only the prevailing conditions at the time of sampling and does not represent the average condition. When a source is known to be constant over a considerable time period, in that case a single grab sample should be considered as a representative. Otherwise, simple this single sample or a grab sample cannot be representative of a particular sampling point. If the source are known to vary with the time, then grab samples should be collected at suitable intervals of time means should be collected periodically and analyzed separately. The results can be documented in terms of mean, standard deviation, frequency and duration of variation. When the source composition varies in space, collect samples from appropriate location. Let me come to the composite samples. When sport samples collected at the same sampling site at different times are mixed is called as composite sample. The method of collection reduces the analytical effort. It is a useful technique when daily variations occur and seasonal variations are the objective of the study. A composite sample of 24 hour period is considered standard for most of the determination or for analysis. Sometimes a composite sample representing one shift or a shorter time period or a complete cycle of a period operation may also be preferable. A composite sample provides more meaningful data than the grab sample. Third type of sampling is integrated sampling. Sometimes samples are collected at the same location, but due to horizontal or vertical variation in the composition of the river or in the water flow or lake, they come from different points in the cross section that are regarded with a different relative importance. To evaluate the average composition, total load or mass balance integrated samples are collected often in proportion to the river flow of the area of sample collection. What should be the sampling 
frequency. The sampling frequency is governed by the level of variation in water quality of a water body. If variations are large in a short duration of time, a higher frequency is required to cover such variations. On the other hand, if there is no significant variation in water quality, frequent collection of sample is not required. Water sample should be collected at intervals so that no change in water quality could pass unnoticed. It depends on the type of data required, purpose of monitoring, availability of funds and availability of staff or personnel. The following frequency should be adopted provisionally once in a year. This frequency is generally applicable for long term ecological evaluation of biological water quality. The time and place of the sampling should be the same. Four times in a year for studying seasonal variations in water quality. Sometimes three samples are taken in a year like in a year like pre monsoon, monsoon and post monsoon period. Sampling will also be dependent on type of data and the parameters to be analyzed. Whenever we go for the sampling, certain sampling devices are needed. Sampling devices are devices used for sample collection. The important sampling devices are bottles and samplers. Bottles, the same bottle used for storage should be used for collection of the sample. The sampling bottle may be made of either glass or plastic usually polyethylene. It must be capable of being tightly sealed either by stopper or cap. Sometimes it is recommended that plastic bottle should be used for the heavy metals analysis samplers. The samplers are for deep water sampling and operated on a line or wire. They are advantageous as several samples can be mounted together on one wire. They are available in different sizes and for specific purposes. For example, sampling for bacteria, sampling for trace elements, sampling for pesticide. So, different type of suitable samplers are available depending on the parameter. Different type of water samples are available and many of them are designed for specific purposes. Two most commonly used water samplers are dissolved oxygen samplers and depth samplers. A dissolved oxygen sampler is a metal tube about 10 centimeter in diameter and 30 centimeter in length. One end is sealed and other end is fixed with a removable cap. Depth sampler. The depth sampler sometimes called a grab sampler is designed in such a way that it can retrieve a sample from any predetermined depth. Then pump sampler. Automatic sampling devices using pumping system are also available. They can be preset to desired volume and or time of sampling. In these depending on the collection bottle installed series of spot samples or composite sample can be collected. For sediment sampling, one may use one of the following techniques. The first one is coring. A PVC or perspex tube is used to extract relatively undisturbed sediments. Then grabbing, a large volume of sediments disturbed or undisturbed are collected by grabbing. Organisms can also be collected by grabbing sampling method. Others special type of sediment samplers are also available. For example, for use in the deep sea, piston corers are available. For use in sandy sediments, vibro corers are available. 
for large sections of the sediments box corers are available. Cleaning of the bottles is very very important. Single cleaning method cannot be used when you are interested in the analysis of different parameters of a samples. So, different cleaning is required for different parameters. Let me start with heavy metals. For heavy metals rinsing of glassware with 1 is to 1 dilute nitric acid for 1 week is needed followed by 3 times washing with double distilled water. For trace organic compounds analysis sampling bottles, bottles for uh, trace organic compounds like pesticides should be cleaned with the solvent used for extraction and that should also be of very high purity of very high quality. For general sampling samples for the general physicochemical characterization allow less vigorous methods. Thorough cleaning with water to remove, to remove particulates and two times rinsing with distilled water will usually are sufficient. However, the following is recommended for better results. The bottles should be soaked with 10 percent HCl for 24 hour and then thoroughly cleaned and rinsed with distilled water. Labeling of the samples is very very important. If we do not do proper labeling then samples may get mixed ultimately all data will be useless. Sample container is labeled properly. Sample container can be labeled directly with a waterproof marker or by attaching an appropriately inscribed tag or label. Information on the sample label should include sample code number, this is for the identification of the location, date and time of sampling, source and type of sample, pretreatment or preservation carried out on the sample, any special note for the analyst and sampler's name. This information should be given on the sample label. Next step is sample preservation and transportation to the laboratory for analysis. Let me come to the preservation. Preservation of collected sample is necessary for some parameters because some parameters are more prone to change in environment and time. Samples for BOD and bacteriological analysis should be stored at a temperature below 4 degrees Celsius and in dark as soon as possible after sampling. If samples collected for chemical oxygen demand that is COD analysis cannot be analyzed on the day of collection. So, the samples should be preserved below pH 2 by the addition of concentrated sulfuric acid. Samples which are to be analyzed for the presence of metals should be acidified to pH less than 2 with concentrated nitric acid because at low pH metals remain soluble in the water and they will not be deposited on the walls of the container. After preservation next step is transportation. After labeling and preservation the samples should be placed in an insulated ice box for transportation. Samples should be transported to concerned laboratory as soon as possible preferably within 48 hours. Analysis of bacteriological samples should be started and analyzed within 24 hours of collection. If samples are being brought to the laboratory they should be transported in less than 24 hours. Different requirements are there for the sampling from different sources. Let me discuss how to do the sampling from different sources. Samples should be collected as far as possible from the midstream of rivers and canals at mid depth. A sample from 100 meter downstream of the discharge point is considered representative in case of small streams. In rivers many kilometers will be necessary. 
in case of longer rivers there should be three fixed sampling location through cross section left middle and right ideally sample should be taken from a turbulent point sampling should be carried out at all draw of points and draw of depths in addition to the point of input now how to do the ground water sampling general points to be kept in mind for ground water sampling piezometers should be used for recording of water level and water quality monitoring weight sample bottles should be used to collect the sample from an open well about 30 cm below the surface of the water samples from the production tube wells should be collected after running the well for about 5 to 7 min 7 minutes so that any pipe that is standing in the pipe of the tube well is is a uh, removed and the sample which we take that is actually the representative sample of the aquifer non production well should be pursed using a submersible pump for bacteriological samples when collected from tube wells or hand pumps the spout or outlet of the pump should be sterilized under flame by spirit lamp before collection of sample in container how to do the sampling from the drinking water supply the sampling point should be located at a place where all the reactions of the disinfecting agent are completed and also some residual disinfectant is present in the sample how to do the sampling of sewage or effluent from an industry sewage and effluent samples may be required when sewage enters a treatment plant after various stages of treatment and the treated effluent means different type of samples may be required from the sewage as well as from the effluent treatment plant in case of sewers or effluent treatment plants samples should be drawn from a point where uh, from a point which is at 1/3 water depth from the top without skimming the top or scraping the bottom sample should be drawn gently without causing aeration or liberation of dissolved gases in most cases sewage or effluent flows are intermittent and collection of sample every hour may be necessary here the checklist is given whenever you go for the field for the sampling so that what should be done before going to the field visit for sampling you should have a planned route timing area map sampling site location map personal and sample transport arrangement ice box filled with ice or ice packs or ice weight bottle sampler bod bottles special sample containers uh, for bacteriological heavy metals etc then sample containers sample preservatives like acids which you are, which you are going to use for the preservation of your samples then thermometers for temperature monitoring then tissue paper then other field measurement kit as required sample identification forms labels for sample containers field notebook pen pencil marker soap and towel match box spirit lamp torch rope drinking water knife first aid box gloves and eye protection dump sampler to check well conditions submersible pump and accessories so dear students in this module we have studied that what is sampling what is the purpose of sampling how the sampling should be done from the different sources and what precautions should be taken what are different devices that are used for the sampling and in the end we discuss the checklist or the items that are required during the sampling i hope you have enjoyed this module thank you